If you guys have been following us on the channel, you've probably already met Forrest. This is Lauren's new 1999 Forerunner, and you probably also know that it's got a few issues. Yeah. One of those issues being the radiator. So in today's video, we've got our friend Brenner here that's gonna be helping out with the replacement. Um, and this is actually round two. So we made an attempt about a week ago, got the new radiator installed, and then right at the last minute, found out that right here, there's a little nipple missing. So we had to order a new radiator and wait a week for it to get here. And now that it's here, we're gonna take out the new radiator and put in another new one. So last time we did this, Brunner said it'd take him 30 minutes. <laughs> Ended up being two hours before we got it in with the broken one. And then we noticed it at the very last step. Yep. Yeah. So now that you've got some experience, what's your guess? How long is it gonna take? Um, hour, hour and a half. Oh, what? I was guessing 45 minutes. I figured that too, after you've already got experience, like you know what you're doing right. now. If everything goes right, which it should because we've already done it. So we've already I'll drained it everything, I'll, so we don't have to I wait don't know. for it to drain. I'll, I'll give it an hour. Okay, Lauren and I are both at 45 minutes. Okay. Wait, let's check, let's check the new one. I already checked it. Yeah, so this is a good lesson for you guys. If you're, you're going to replace a radio in your vehicle, make sure that you check things ahead of time. Right here, I this is bad boy. So we got it. I don't see anything else that's, bro that's broken, but we should probably... Take another quick look and just make sure. Brenner, what do you think? Looks good to me. Looks good to you? Yeah. Now we know if we put it in this time and it's broken, we broke it. Yeah. Now, actually the really handy thing about this was that we weren't really certain that whether we broke it or whether it came broken, but because we were making a video, we were able to go back to the original footage or early on and found some clips where it was actually broken before we put it in. So. Check made us made us feel good about returning it. I was able to send some photos to the seller on eBay and let it, let them know about it. So yeah, check your parts before you install them. Check your parts. Yeah. That's for sure. So with that said, let's get started with this install. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the six bolts underneath on the skid plate. There are. I don't know if you can see this. There's one here. Two, three four, five, and then six is up in there. Also, it's important to note that there's also a clip underneath holding the skid plate in, and so you will have to undo that clip. All right, so first we're gonna take off the first bottom hose on the right side. Um, it's a little clamp, you can get like, I got some of these. Grab it, put them right on, squeeze them, pull back the clamp, like that. Then pull off the hose. Be careful, coolant will come out of this. Just like that. Mostly drained already because Mostly of our drained. first yep. first go around, so you get a lot more than that when you're doing it. And um, to keep in mind, if you want it to drain faster, you can first drain it here out of this little white tab and then go up on top and make sure you're your uh, vehicle is cool, unscrew the radiator cap and it'll make a better flow and it'll drain faster. So next up we're going to take off these two transmission lines. Um, same thing just like with this clip. Unclamp this, pull it out, Get a, make sure you get a plug of some sort so you can plug in the hose so it doesn't just start draining and you have to go and buy more transmission fluid. Um, do that for both lines, get those plugged. All right, so I'm gonna take this other clamp off, same thing. I'm taking off the top hose. One of the top hoses. There was nothing in it. How do you get these things off? You gotta, you gotta be aggressive with it. There you go. So there's that one, and then next we're gonna take out these bolts. Where he pulled off this little one. Yeah, usually yeah. there's a nipple right here. 
pull it off, you could just tuck it right around here so it's out of your way. And same with this one, kind of tuck it, tuck it away. If your hoses are if you're, worn out, you yeah. want to replace those too. So yeah. you want to check and see if exactly. they're cracked or showing any age. These look like they're in okay shape. All right, so after you got all your hoses, these two on top, three down below, we're gonna take off the fan shroud. There are two bolts on each side um, and they're 10 millimeters. All right, so uh, we're gonna take the shroud out. There's a, a piece, if you come over here, there's a, a little U piece that goes under this and it has four clips and you'll just clip them out. Um, after those clip out, you can just pull right up, just like this, and it comes out. Next step, um, there are four bolts, 12, mil 12 millimeter, two right here, and two down there. So I'll do the tops first. After you got the last bolt, make sure you got a hold of it. So it doesn't just fall out. Push it forward a little bit. Get it out of the little clamps. And then just go up. Be careful with the... What are you doing over there, Lauren? Nothing. Are you on Instagram? Some, okay. I was not, I need to be on Instagram. Tell us a little bit about your Instagram for all of these YouTube watchers. So, I have started a new Instagram. It's called ForestRunner99. My car is named Forest because he is a forest green color and we thought it was funny. We're going to just use the, these rails that hold actually the radiator in, the original one, so. It's a 13 millimeter for this one. And we're going to use the hardware as well. And the reason you're doing this is because it seemed like it was easier to get it in yeah, by just a, leaving the lines in. They're basically the same. Yeah, it's, they're basically the same. So. so to remove that, it looks like we got just one bolt on each side, right? Yeah, so four, four total. Four total. Okay. Remove the rail from that side as well as this side. All right, put the new one in. Make sure you be careful with your, all your uh, connections. So they, it's used by like a little clamp right here. So these sides have these little rails right here. I don't know if you can see this. Um, there's these little indent right here in each of this. This one will go here and then the bottom one's the same on each side. down and then you kind of slide it towards you once you get it right in that little crease. There it goes, just like that. Yep, and then you got this guy, you can slide it in here. And that came off of the new radio. Came off the new one, yeah, so you'll pretty much, you'll slide it just like this on each side. And then you'll grab bolt there you go you do that for this side and then the bottom doesn't have these little rubber grommets and so you just put two of the bolts right in there and you're good all right so we'll tighten up this guy same thing 13 millimeter so we're going to put the fan shroud in, just slips right down in there, and you're going to get your four bolts, line them up, we're going to put the three hoses back in, um, so we'll do the actual coolant one first, so we actually plug this with a uh, paper towel so it doesn't just leak everywhere, take the old cap off. I back on. Get your uh, clamps over here. Transmission line. The large hose goes into the one closest to the coolant hose. Last one. Alrighty. So one, two, and three. And then we'll go to the top. Grab 
grab this guy, put it on here. Do this with your fingers, super loose. And this guy, take the cap off. Put this hose on. Get your vice grips. Get your old radiator cap, if it was broken, replace it. If not, put it right on there. I'm putting on the last cap. The only cap. The only cap. There you go. <laughs> I should be a mechanic, can I say? I'm gonna put this little plastic part of the shroud back on. You can just slide it through under everything. I don't know if you can see this. See my hand right here, where, my, where I'm pointing? I don't know if you can see this. But you pretty much, there's little tabs in it and you'll just click it in. And you'll do that to all of them. And then there's these little metal clips and you'll put those over the clips and then it's installed. Shout out to the follower of the week, Antonio Leon. Thank you for letting me know that your mom used to have a forerunner too. It's pretty cool stuff. She's probably a pretty cool mom. Just saying, thank you. This is the way to work on cars. Just bring along a friend, have him do all the work. We sit around and watch. We're supervising, we're managing. Sort of. Put it up and put the bolts in. Look at that, he's, he's doing it. If you're supervising well, he'd be getting it done faster. You know what he's doing right now? We said it was gonna take 45 minutes. He said it was gonna take an hour and a half. It's an hour and a half. And he, it, took, it went too quick, so now he's trying to stall. Oh. So it takes an hour and a half, so he was right. Yeah. Shout out Wyatt Goff for all of the support, all the love on the channel. Yeah. All right, I just made an observation during this install video. I'm not even doing any work, and I wore my old ratty sweatshirt. You can see that it's all like worn out. These guys are wearing their Patagonia. <laughs> Okay, Lauren's got her Patagonia sweater and she's laying on this cardboard with all this cooling and everything. <laughs> Brenner over here it's is wearing okay. Patagonia it's too. It's okay, I already, had, I already got a stain. Are you guys sponsored? Is that yeah, what this is? Is this like a product placement? Us. <laughs> okay, advice, it's don't wear your Patagonia thing. clothing to work on your car. Wear your old Adidas sweatshirt. No, but sweatshirt. like, it's so warm. You know what, no, wear your Patagonia stuff because then it has a lifetime warranty. I don't know if the lifetime warranty counts for like all the grease. That's Maybe on not, there. but like, then if like you end up keep using it and this stuff and then it rips or something, then you feel like, oh, it ripped. You could do that. Just wanted to make that point because I noticed it, so. Brenner, are we done? We are. We gotta add one, some coolant. Well, yes, add some coolant, so we'll. Uh, do we know how much coolant we're putting in? Um, You know, we're actually. Gonna I thought you just filled this up. No, we're going to start by oh. putting it in the radiator. This is already 50-50, yeah. so we are not going to be adding water to it. And make sure you're putting in your coolant right, and make sure you have the right coolant. Let's show my um, product we're so, using here. Yeah, there you go. I have about two quarts left in there. So um, if you don't have a funnel, which we do, but I'll show you if you don't. Um, if you have a really full bottle, <clears throat> you actually want to pour it sideways. So if you go sideways, it makes the air go easier, so you don't have a bunch of uh, air bubbles when you're pouring. I've done this many times, poured in coolant because my old radiator was cracked. Let me tell you, it was not that easy. <laughs> it went everywhere. Unpopular opinion, I think forerunners are cooler than Tacomas. What? <laughs> you don't think so? Let's see what the viewers think. <laughs> Tacomas are forerunners. I actually own both now because we have a. Yeah, Tacoma what do you forerunner. think? Well, you, you guys are going to have to stay posted for that. I'm still kind of feeling it out, and then I'm going to let you know which vehicle I like more. But I definitely know that the fan base on this channel is going to be a little bit more Tacoma yeah. heavy than forerunner. <laughs> well, it was an, uh, an unpopular opinion. So here's full, full, brand new bottle. Do you want the no, funnel? This is how you do it right here. So after you fill up the radiator, um, 
to the to the rim, put on the cap, fill up your coolant reservoir till the full line, which is back over here, and then you're all good. Next up, we're starting the car. Is that yeah, right? You're gonna run the fluid and then check it again. Yeah, pretty much. All right, the car's running now, and it sounds pretty good. We don't see any water coolant spurting up anywhere, so that's a good sign. Her car that's got over 200,000 miles, she sounds pretty good. Yep. Good old forest. So we're just running the car for a few minutes to let the coolant circulate through the system, and then we'll shut it off and check all the levels again and just make sure that there's enough coolant in there. So we just got back. We took it out driving to help circulate all of the fluids and make sure that nothing else was wrong with it and everything was put in correctly, and now, we went to go check the transmission fluid and it needs about half a quart. Yeah, so you want to add um, some more fluid because when you do take those lines out, you may forget to plug it or you might not have a plug near you and you might lose some transmission fluid. So you want to make sure you put in just as much as you, what stuff came out. So add some more if you lost some. So that's what we did, probably around a half quart. Um, so we're just going to put it in with the funnel. The funnel's very handy. We're gonna We're throw the dipstick in, check it to make sure it's at the right levels, and then she's set. Yeah. And I can finally take her out of Mike's Mike's driveway. Yeah, pretty exciting. Done. All right, the radiator is in. There's no puddles under the vehicle, no smoke or anything. So it seems like. Maybe Brenner was successful. He didn't look up any instructions on this. He just went for it and looks like it worked out all right. Our only real snafu was not checking the part to begin with before we first installed it. So make sure that you guys do that. Subscribe for more videos of Run Forest Runner 99. In the meantime, thanks for watching.